everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting blue corn flowers. I'm going to attempt a loose version of this, but before we start, let me just begin by drawing out the simpler shapes first as warm-up and exercise. So let me just simplify the overall shapes first. I like to think of the center as just a circle to begin with and petals forming around the circle. The petals are fairly thin but I want the edges to be kind of jagged like this. And when I'm drawing out the petals, I like to distance them apart and make sure that the tip connecting to the center are nice and thin. So even if some petals are closer together, there might still be a bit of negative space in between. Sometimes I even like to add petals behind and in between the ones that I've drawn out. Then for the center, I like to add curvy lines to add some textures for the stamen. I'm just going to draw out a larger version here so you might get a better understanding of the shapes. You can try to draw this out as many times as you want if you want to just get used to the shapes. Then after that, you can try out different angles that you might want to incorporate into your painting. Another angle that I like to include is from the side and for this I want to show the receptacle of the flower which I like to simplify as an oval shape continued with smaller petals right on top of it and larger petals above the smaller looking one. This way it looks like the ones closer to us are foreshortened whereas the other ones at the back are a bit higher and lifted. If you want to do an angle in between the ones that I've drawn out so far, you can combine the four shortened petals, but we want to also show a bit of the center at the same time, which then turns more into an oval shape as we're looking at it from the side. Then again, I'm going to follow it with the receptacle and the stem. And anywhere in between these angles can really be determined by how much of the center is visible to us. I like to also include the flower buds or the ball of the flowers. And I like to simplify it the same way as how I drew out the receptacle, but I like to add really tiny little petals right on top. Here I'm going to show you how I paint the petals. I like to bunch thin strokes together so I can show the jagged edges. Around three to four strokes to come together in the middle and form this petal. But at the same time, you can also create thin petals with only a single or a couple of strokes if you want to show the side angle of these petals when we're painting them on an angle. Keep in mind to distance the center apart. This way we have space to paint the center of the flower using a darker blue color, which I paint using tiny thin strokes to show the fuzzy stamens. To make the flowers look more flowy, I like to paint using slightly curved strokes to paint the petals. And you don't have to worry about painting them with too much detail as how we drew them out before, but to look at the overall silhouette of the painting and make sure that they're nice and rounded instead of the flowers looking kind of blocky. As for the receptacle, I just paint an oval underneath the petals that we painted earlier followed with a thin stem and leaves. The leaves are very simple so I won't really get into too much detail. I just like to paint these long thin leaves while playing with the pressure of my brush so the top and the bottom are thinner than the middle section of the leaves. I like to also work with different tones of the hues that we used but I'll get into that later as we paint the actual composition. Here I'm just drawing out these curved lines, which is what I meant before by making the overall silhouette of your flowers look more rounded instead of it looking blocky. And this can be achieved by making the sides come inwards and making them a bit shorter so they don't stick out and create square edges. So that's it for the sketch and the painting example. You can do as many of these to get warmed up if you would like to. But next I'll show you the small selection of colors that I'll be using for this painting. Firstly, this is Olive Green by Holbein, Paint Scree Bluish by Schminga, Sepia by Holbein, and Prussian Blue by Holbein. So let's get right into painting. Before I started painting this, I already had a visualization that I wanted the final composition 
to somewhat have a diagonal flow. This can be changed along the way, but this is just how I want to start with. So I used my soft bristle brush to just wet random patches diagonally across the space that I have. Then I'm going to follow this up by using a thin consistency of Prussian blue and then I just want to create some splatters randomly on my page. You'll see that on the wet areas the light blue will start to just travel on its own creating its own weird pattern. And while the surface is still somewhat wet, I also used a thin consistency of olive green and started painting some of the leaves underneath. You'll see in some areas the green and the blue is a bit more blurred where some parts have sharper edges. This is because of the random wet patches that we painted earlier, but this is what I want to create more of a loose and dynamic background. If you don't like certain parts while the surface is still wet, you can also use a clean brush to just smudge it in or even take off the excess paint with tissue. I'm quite happy with how mine turned out so far and the surface is a bit more dry now but it's still a little bit damp. And I'm just going to follow this up using a thin consistency of Prussian blue again and I want to start painting some of the petals very lightly. I'm just trying to map out where I want to place the flowers and this makes it a bit easier because we're not creating such vibrant colors that might be hard to take off if we create any mistakes. Hopefully from this you can start to see some of the flowers being formed. I played around with the size as well as where the flowers are facing and while the surface is still a little bit damp, I also added a very light consistency of the green to add the receptacle underneath the flower petals. As I progress with the painting, the surface should also start to get more and more dry along the way, though some parts are still a little bit wet. Do want to make sure that the dampness is still manageable though. For me, I think that this is okay that some parts are still wet and some parts are drying out. So I just follow this up using a medium consistency Prussian blue and you'll see that some parts have sharper edges and some parts are blurring out. That's where you can tell the areas are wet. Your painting won't look exactly like mine because you can't really control where the water is flowing exactly but this is part of playing with the loose technique with watercolors and this is what makes it fun because it's quite unpredictable. I think I made a mess on the right side of the flower that I just painted earlier and when this happened it's okay I'm just going to take off the excess paint using tissue and I'm just going to repaint some of the petals. Next I'm going to work on the receptacle again. I use a little bit of the sepia to mix it with the olive green that I already have on my palette and I'm just going to paint a very light consistency of the receptacle using the tip of my brush. You'll see some white negative spaces here and there and that's okay. I always like to leave out some negative spaces to make the composition look a little bit more light, especially for larger shapes. I also want to paint the stems using the same color mixture. But as I paint the stems, I do want to make sure that the load on my brush is very light so I won't create puddles or create thick lines and it's much more controllable this way. Then I'm just going to follow this up by creating ovals around the composition to represent the budding flowers. Next I'm going to move on to paint the center of the flowers. For this I use a thick consistency of a mixture between Prussian blue and Payne's grey bluish and just as how we practiced earlier, I used the tip of my brush to create really thin fuzzy lines and you'll see that some parts are still a little bit wet which is why the edges have blurred out and some parts have sharper edges. To paint this, I do want to make sure that the load on my brush is fairly light so I can use the tip and control the lines. Here I'm using a mixture of olive green, sepia and Prussian blue to create a dark green color and I paint one side of 
the receptacle so this creates a little bit of shadow and makes the receptacle look more rounded than before and you'll see that the surface was still a little bit damp so the edges have blurred and softened up I'm going to flatten out the top side of this bulb right here because I might want to add some petals on top and then I'm going to paint on the stems. You'll see that some of the lines are disconnected and that's okay because it'll just make it look lighter. Sometimes if we connect it all together it might look too thick and bulky. Then I'm going to use the same color and use whatever is left on my brush to paint on top of some of the leaves that I painted earlier while leaving out some of the dried light green color from the background. So there's a mixture of values in the composition and this will just give the painting a bit more depth. I can see that most of the areas on my paper is completely dry, including the petals that I painted earlier. The colors have faded a bit and it looks more flat in a way. And here I'm just going to layer on the details using a mix of Prussian blue with a tiny bit of paint gray bluish in a medium consistency. And while I'm painting this, I'm limiting the areas that I'm painting on. I'm basically just trying to break the flat looking areas using this color to suggest layers and depth to the petals of the flowers. So while I add on the details, I just want to mention that this painting was done fairly quickly. It actually took me around 15 to 20 minutes to complete this. And though I cut small portions when my hand was off the camera, this is actually a real-time painting. I didn't speed any of the parts at all. So try to not overthink this one and just experiment with it. If it doesn't turn out the way you want it to the first time, you can just give it another go without wasting too much time. And I just find that this is a really nice exercise with an easy subject matter to practice painting loosely, which is something that I'm not used to. This painting is fairly forgiving so you can see that I made a mess on the left side and since I use a medium consistency the paint almost dried so I added more water to reactivate the paint and then take off the excess using tissue and then just add on a thicker consistency of the same color to fix the placement of the petals. I'm going to also build on the color of the center again using a medium consistency paint spray bluish and a light load on my brush so I can increase the value and make the statement stand out a bit more. Here I'm going to use a darker green mixture by using sepia with olive green and I'm just going to layer on some of the leaves so it doesn't look so flat and I'm just going to line parts of the leaves especially at the bottom because I want the bottom to be a bit darker than the top and the green looked a bit too earthy for me so I just added the blue mixture or whatever was left on my palette and mix it with the green earlier to make the tone a bit cooler. For this area here, I find that the receptacle kind of looked too chunky and I also want to add the foreshortened petals in front. This I find will give a bit more form to the flower. So I layered on more Prussian blue on top of the light receptacle now that the receptacle is completely dried. And then I'm going to follow this up using a dark green mixture from the blue, sepia, and olive green in a medium to thick consistency to paint underneath those petals to just bring it out a bit more. Because the receptacles here were completely dry, you can see that the edges of the dark green is very sharp. So I soften it up using a clean damp brush and blur out some of the edges. I'm pretty much done with the main composition here and I just want to add some enhancements and additional fillers. I'm starting here with splatters by using Prussian Blue, 
in quite a watery load. Then using a thin consistency of the green mix that I still have left on my palette, I want to add larger but very light leaves to make the composition look more full and lush. Sometimes I like to also go in with a medium consistency and run my brush over the wet areas so some lines are more blurred while some has sharper edges. I'm going to keep building up the fillers by adding more splatters and while I was splattering some paint in this area I felt like it'll be better to add another flower on the left and right side but just at a distance so I used a clean down brush to pick up the paint that I just splattered and I'm going to spread the paint around and suggest the shape of the flower petals then I'm going to work on them further with more details in a loose manner just like the rest of the flowers but not as prominent as the main flowers of the composition. From here I just want to add the fillers and details until I find a good balance for the overall composition. So I'll just layer on a bit more details for some of the flowers here and maybe add more splatters then smudge them to create more of a dynamic and loose feel to the background. Whenever I want the paper to be completely dry, I sometimes use a hair dryer to make the process quicker so I can layer on more of the details with the sharper edges. And that's pretty much it for this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the real-time process for this one and learned something new along the way. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!